So this is one of my favorite seasons that just begun a couple weeks ago, and that is obviously football season. Um, that's, that's the season that is my absolute favorite, and uh, I feel the pain of coming to church on a Sunday morning when the Hawks are playing, but I'd rather be with the Lord. What was it? Uh, better is one day in your house than 10,000 out of Seahawks games. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the song goes. There's a couple of things that I love. Um, about it, and, and it kind of started as just a, a reason to get together. There's there's friends, there's football, which is pretty fun to watch, and of course food, because those gatherings are always a good time. Um, I love the community, I love the high fives. If I'm honest, I even love the commercials, because they're pretty hilarious to watch. Uh, and I'm amazed at football, as, as the years have gone by, I've been even more amazed by what these guys can do. I mean, where else can you watch a 330 pound guy run at full sprint for like 40 yards and actually be trekking faster than I could possibly go. Um, you got these guys who are like 6'4 and 220 or something, a wide receiver out there, and they have the grace and the agility of a ballerina as they keep their toes in while they make a catch. And there's something beautiful and amazing about football. But there's, I gotta admit, there's one thing that is, is a, a drawback for me. It makes me wanna not watch the game anymore. And um, it's player celebrations. They're ridiculous. Like a guy makes a touchdown and he spins the ball and he puts his hands by it like it's too hot to actually hold. Or there's guys taking fake selfies. And, and, and it used to be just touchdowns, but now it's everybody. Like the defensive lineman makes a tackle and all of a sudden the camera's on this like 330-pound guy who's doing a dance that I can no longer get out of my head and I didn't want to see. You know, so that's just wrong. That's not pretty. Uh, now, you may be thinking, why on earth is Pastor Chris talking about football so much? And it's not just because the Hawks are playing. It actually has a lot to do with the series that we're in. And, and we're doing a series right now on what it means to be kingdom people. Uh, what kind of a, a personality is God looking for in us as he calls us to follow him? How does uh, he change us so that we can be followers of Christ? And um, so today we're going to look at uh, Matthew uh, 6. Yesterday we were in Matthew, or last week we were in Matthew 5, but we're going to look at Matthew 6, uh, 1 through 6 and 16 through 21, and um, consider kind of what kind of person God is calling us to be. So let me pray for us. Lord, um, we do love you. And 2,000 years ago you walked up on a hill and you began to share what it looked like to be a part of your kingdom. You began to share what it looks like uh, for us to be people who are in that kingdom. And um, the vision that you shared is beautiful. And so, Lord, we sit at your feet just as those folks sat at your feet that day. Um, and we look to you. We ask that you would speak to us and that you would unfold what it looks like for us to be invited into your grace and into your kingdom so that we can live as your followers. We love you. Amen. All right, let me read uh, this passage for us. It's Matthew 6, 1 through 6, and 16 through 21. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. Because if you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, don't announce it with a trumpet, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they've received their reward in full, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Don't store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. 
Store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So, religious stuff, praying, fasting, giving to the needy, those sorts of acts. And Jesus is teaching us uh, what it looks like to live these things out well by pointing to some folks who are not uh, living them out well. I know I've spent a good amount of time as a youth pastor, and um, I have a friend whose uh, son was struggling in high school. Oh, actually, he wasn't struggling very much. Uh, He was actually pretty much just not doing high school very much. He wasn't struggling at all for anything. Uh, He was just kind of chilling there, and his grades had begun to drop, and and the parent came to me and said, hey, could you talk to him? I know you were a slacker, too, when you were in high school. (laughs) Not because I was a pastor, but because I was like... So I sat down with him, and I, and I told him a little bit of my story. I had failed so many classes that I didn't have a senior year, uh, and so they considered me a junior on my fourth year of high school, and I ended up doing night school to kind of graduate on time, but as a result of those choices, I didn't really get a senior prom or senior pictures or a senior quote, and it uh, limited my options, and luckily the Lord used that and got me into a Bible school that had no minimum GPA, so that was good. Um, but I was sharing with him just kind of like, some of these choices you're making, they're, they're going to cause some problems down the road, and, and I've been down that road, and you, you don't want to go down it. And that's what Jesus is doing. He's saying, look at these other people. The way they're doing their faith isn't helping them. They're getting what they're seeking right now, which is honor from other people. But you, as my followers... There's something better for you. There's treasures in heaven. There's what God wants to give you. They had sold out their relationship with God for the benefits of appearance and for image. They put on a facade of religiosity rather than lived out their faith. And my guess is, um, even as I say that, you might have a picture in your brain of what inauthentic Christians might look like or what inauthentic uh, religion looks like. I know that I had that picture in my mind, that I grew up in a church where I thought pretty much that what we were doing was we'd go and we'd sing a bunch of songs and we'd say some words together that um, I didn't find a whole lot of meaning in, and we'd put on an appearance for the church people that we had it all together. Um, And uh, I didn't want to have much to do with it. It wasn't a very beautiful thing, and it wasn't life-giving. Now, these these hypocrites that Jesus calls them, and that's a pretty strong word, uh, he says that they would announce with trumpets when they were going to give to the needy. And some commentators think that that he was just exaggerating. Other ones think that they would have someone in their entourage and they would actually have them like blow a trumpet so that when everybody would like turn and look at what the trumpet was about, they would see this guy going, here's some money. I mean, it was was a very dramatic thing. or when they prayed, they would they would schedule it so that they would be out on the busiest corners and they would pray in loud voices and they would have carefully scripted prayers that sounded really beautiful and devout. But Jesus looks at their heart and says, Their hearts weren't even in it. They shouldn't expect anything from God for that kind of prayer. Or can you picture the guy fasting, letting everyone know that he's fasting? Oh, oh such a hard day. I, I've been eight hours now and I I haven't eaten, and um, I'm feeling faint, but I'm doing this for the Lord, everybody. And it's, um, they were playing a religious game. They were doing a touchdown celebration uh, for everyone to notice them. It was pride and ego, but they weren't getting anywhere in their relationship with God. And the interesting thing about this passage is that it says that uh, they did, it doesn't say that they didn't get a reward for it since they got the reward exactly what they were looking for. What they were looking for was for how other people would see them. And that's what they were concerned with, and that's what they got. And he says, as followers of me, concern yourself with what God wants. Look to him. Let him be your audience. And if he's your audience, you're going to find yourself blessed. If you're living a life for God, you're going to find yourself blessed. Now, that word hypocrites... Um, it's actually, it's an acting word. It's a Greek word for the actors. And um, you know the symbol for drama? It's the two faces, the sad face and the really happy face. Um, 
And that was, that was the hypocrite masks, and they would put them on, and they would amplify their voices, but they would also show what character they were supposed to have. They would have that. Uh, they would be the happy person for that show, and so they would have the happy face on. They'd be the tragic character for that show, so they'd have the tragic face on. And what Jesus is saying is that these folks, they're just wearing a mask. It doesn't go any deeper than the surface. It was inauthentic. It, it didn't lack integrity, which is we're the same on the outside as we are on the inside. That was my experience of church when I was a kid. Like I said, it, it didn't draw me in. But then um, when I came to Christ, when I found out that he loved me and that he had forgiven me and that uh, he was inviting me into this new life and that he invited me into community, all the stuff about church suddenly changed. Um, because we weren't just going there to make an appearance at the right church where people could see us and we could sing uh, very beautiful songs that other one, everyone would recognize that we were singing loudly or whatever. We were going there because Jesus was saying, I have a new life for you. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a family to walk that out with. Because you're going to have a bunch of people around you who are going to help you along the way. Uh, we were going to actually worship the Lord. So it really didn't matter if I could sing or not sing because... The Lord was going to be worshipped, and as I worshipped the Lord, I drew closer to Him. Um, as we served others, as we gave to the needy, whatever uh, acts of spiritual devotion that we gave drew us close to the Lord, and then He would use that and bless us and move us forward. Um, Jesus' disciples in this passage are not being encouraged to just be religious people. They're being encouraged to be people who are devoted to God. Um, and our aim can be to actually make everything an act of worship. How do you serve the people you're with during your workday? How do you interact with friends or with family? That can be worship. We can devote ourselves to God in those places. How do we use our money? How do we deal with issues of justice and injustice in the world? Those can all be areas where we go, you know what, I'm going to devote myself to God and not just do my own thing. Now, uh, this is funny because it he's not advocating for us to have a private faith um, in this passage. And he always says, go in your closet to pray. And I grew up in a family where um, where some of my family members go, you know, we don't talk about religion because it's a private matter. It's kind of kept within the family. And I, that's crazy. If we're in this faith that is supposed to, uh, we're blessed, we're forgiven so that we can bless others, if it stops in our family, then, well, that's not that at all. Um, and yet this passage seems to be encouraging that. But last week, we talked about what it was to be salt and light. And the challenge in there was, are you available? Are you out there? Are you visible? So I think the challenge and the struggle on this is not, are you visible? But are you devoted? Do you live your life for God, or do you live it for the appearance of godliness? Do you live it to live out your faith, or do you live it so that other people can think something about you? I know that um, this is something that uh, seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, I'm devoted to God. But it actually has worked out quite tricky in my life. It's a struggle for me. I want you all to like me and respect me. And one of the uh, conversations I had with John was, he goes, Chris, you want people to like you too much. You've got to tell yourself before you get up and preach. I don't care if they like me. I need to say what God wants me to say. Because it changes things. Because what if I'm going to say something that you don't like? Then I get tender. No. Another area is that uh, I love to get noticed for doing good things. And so when I do something good, I can't wait until Christina gets home at the end of the day. And it's like, hey, honey, how was your day? And I'm like, yes. And then I start telling this story about what my day was like. And then I weave in this amazing thing that I did. And I can't wait. I sort of pause. And I go, this is when you're supposed to say, you're awesome. You're so nice. What a good guy you are. Whatever. Um, but I realize in those moments, I'm living to get somebody else to notice that I've done something right. And then it's a totally different thing when we go, you know what? I just need to do this. I need to do it because the Lord wants me to do it. And it really doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Now you may be thinking, Chris, uh, but these images are so old and what does that really have to do with how we do um, faith? I mean, 
I've never stood on a corner and prayed extremely loudly so that other people could hear me because I don't think that would bring the affirmation that you're saying that it would. Um, I don't remember the last time I fasted, and if I did fast, uh, I probably didn't like run around with a scrunched up face and tell everybody I was fasting. And um, the last time I tried to give to the poor guy at the off ramp um, and pulled out a trumpet, he freaked out and wouldn't even come near the car. So. <laughs> Jesus' context doesn't quite carry over perfectly, and I think our, sometimes our culture has it a little bit flipped. Um, maybe they don't look on religious practices as a positive, but as a negative. And the question that comes up is, uh, would that stop us from doing it? I heard a story a while back about a kindergartner who got, sus- a kindergartner who got suspended for telling her classmates that Easter wasn't about bunnies, but it was about Jesus. A kindergartner. That's weird. That's just a weird school. But we are going into context sometimes where faith is not a welcome voice. Um, does that change how we act? How does it change it? Um, I was hanging out with a pastor friend of mine, and, and I had my Bible, and it was the Bible that I could find that day was like one of the bigger ones with like gold leaf stuff on the side. It was clearly a Bible. And he goes, uh, you know, if you carry that around, everyone's going to know you have a Bible. And I go, yeah. Well, don't you think that that might get in the way of some people talking to you sometimes? I go, whoa, what do I do with that? I'm living out my faith, but what if, is that is that getting in the way of the Lord working because I'm carrying a Bible? What do I do with that? Is it okay to have a Bible on your desk at work? What does that say? Um, what does it mean when you tell people, hey, I can't come over for the game because I got to go to church? Do they go, oh, bummer life you have? Um, how do we do that? Do we pray for people? What if we have somebody in our life who doesn't believe in God clearly, but you can totally tell that they could use some prayer right now? Do we let them know we're praying for them or not? Do we pray in the restaurant? Do we pray at the family gathering when nobody else wants to pray for dinner? Do we do so silently? Or do we even let them know that we're praying? Do we just like pretend to eat, but we know we're praying? Or do we go? <laughs> okay. I had to thank the Lord for my food again. <laughs> so, like, this, it's tricky. How do we live out our faith authentically and yet not do it in such a way that we're worried about what people think? I think it gets really easy if we set aside those questions because even in those questions, we're worrying about what other people are thinking of us. And we say, what does it look like for me to devote my life to Christ? And what Jesus teaches in this is that there will be a reward. There's treasures in heaven, and those can't be taken away, and God will pour out blessings. He will use us as we live out our faith with simple honesty and authenticity. For people devoted to God, not to some image, God will show up. I want to close with a a quick story. Um, I worked at a camp for a number of years. I did camp ministry at Samantha Bible Camp. It was awesome. And uh, one day, while well, it was at the off season, so I was actually at school, I got a call from the camp secretary's husband, who I knew, he was an okay guy, uh, but I hadn't like hung out with him. We weren't like really tight. And he called me up and he goes, um, Chris, this is weird, but I was praying about what I should do with some money and, um, and I think that I'm supposed to bring this to you at your Bible school and um, give you this. Uh, okay, I mean, <laughs> sounds good to me. <laughs> and so he, he came up and he told me, he said, you know, um, the Lord pretty much told me that I, I need to give you this this $100 bill and you're supposed to use it to, to go out to dinner or to have some fun. And it was a time in my life where things were really tight, where things were really strapped and I was really stressed out for school and there wasn't any space left for me. And in that moment, something in me broke and I go, man, who is this God that actually sees me, who actually cares about me in my life? Not just cares about me enough to make sure that I'm fed, but actually cares about how I'm doing. And I know for this guy, whatever God was doing with him was something too. Here he was taking a strange leap to do something that was just off the charts, not normal, 
And and that he was probably like, if I call Chris, he's gonna think I'm crazy. And um, what am I? I really want this money for something else, but but God touched him and he responded. And I'm completely convinced that in that moment we were both living out our faith authentically. And in that moment, my vision of God got bigger. His vision of God got bigger. His hands loosened up a little bit around the stuff that he had so that God could use him more and more. And God moves. He's moving now. He wants to bring wholeness and healing to us and to this world. That's why we're having a healing service. And the way that that's going to happen is when we say, all right, God, I'm going to do what I'm going to do for you. Whether it be work, whether it be how I deal with my money, whether it be how I pray, whether it be um, whether I'm going to fast or not fast, whatever it is. If we dedicate it to the Lord, then God shows up. Treasures in heaven begin to appear. Blessings fall into us and through us. But the image is always there. So God says, take a step back from me. From that, live for me. That's what I think this passage says. So let's pray. God, um, may the way that we express our faith not be like that of the hypocrites. May we not wear a mask when it comes to you. If we're um, having a hard time, if we want to shake our fists with you, Lord, let us do that. If we... Uh, want to bring glory to you, let us do that. And Lord, help us to be real. To be real with each other, to be real with the people that we're around, to be real with you, and let our faith be a part of that. Make us into that salt and light, and make us into people who really aren't too worried about what everyone else thinks, but are people who are dedicated to you. Help us to live for your audience instead of everyone else's. Lord, we do love you. Amen.